In this video, we'll discuss the continuation bet, shortened the C bet. Well, what is it? It's a bet on the flop made by who? Made by the pre-flop aggressor. And if that's not clear what that means, we'll get to it in a second. How big is a C bet? It's traditionally half the pot all the way up to the size of the pot. The big kicker, though, is that all these things are true in addition to the fact that the person making the c-bet does it without a made hand. Not always, but more often than not, the c-bet is made without a made hand. Let's look at a, at a table and do a hand example to hit these points home. We're the smiley face here in late middle position. And we raise 300 at 50, 100 blinds. And our opponent, he just calls. Both blinds fold, so it's a heads up pot. The fact that we raised and were just called means we're the pre flop aggressor. We have the lead. The pot is now 750. And the flop comes out 10 to 6. Forgot to mention, but let's say we have something like Ace King. We missed the flop. We may be ahead, but we don't have a made hand. And we lead out for 500. This 500 is known as a C bet. It's a bet on the flop by the pre flop aggressor, that's us. And it's between one half and the size of the pot. It happens to be exactly two thirds. But in our example, it could be anywhere between 375 and 750. What does our opponent do? He folds, and the c-bet works. But why does it work? Why did we get him to fold when we didn't even have a made hand? There's two main reasons. One is we were the pre-flop raiser. And this demonstrates that our hand has strength. Our opponent saw this, and when we continue that aggression on the flop, he has no other reason to believe that our hand is still strong. So he folds. The second reason is our opponent misses the flop often. And because he's facing a bet, and he himself usually doesn't have a made hand, he happily folds. Let's make a table and look more closely at the frequency with which our opponent misses and what this means for our bet sizing of the continuation bet and the break-even bet size threshold. So we'll draw a table and we'll compare ourselves against any number of opponents. We'll look at a C bet against one opponent, two opponents, and three opponents. Now, don't worry how we arrived at this math. Take it as a given, but when you're facing one opponent, he's going to miss the flop, meaning he's not going to make a hand, almost two-thirds of the time, 65%. That means you could actually bet two times the pot and break even in your continuation bet. This is assuming that when he's missed, he'll always fold to a continuation bet. And if he makes a hand, let's assume he has a better hand than you, so you'll always fold on the turn. That's an extreme assumption, but for simplicity's sake, we'll just assume that's true. So that means two times the pot as a continuation bet, with your opponent missing two-thirds of the time, will be a break-even play. If, that's, if the math is not clear to you, watch our video on pot odds and hand equity. Against two opponents now, the chances that both of them miss the flop goes down to 41%. And this means your break-even continuation bet would be two-thirds of the pot. Against three opponents, only 26% of the time, none of them connect with the flop. A break-even continuation bet here would be one-third of the pot. But remember, 
The recommended size of a seabed is between half the pot and a pot. And against one opponent, two times the pot's a massive bet. It's actually a big bet against anybody. We call it an over bet. So here, a bet between half and the size of the pot will still leave you with plenty of profit. So the cont continuation bet against one opponent is a very profitable strategy. Against two, you don't want to bet more than two-thirds of the pot. So we recommend a continuation bet only between half and two-thirds of the pot when facing two opponents. But the continuation bet is still a profitable play. Unfortunately, once you're facing three opponents, your continuation bet would have to be one-third the size of the pot or lower. And this bet is going to be so small, your opponents will think it's suspicious. And also, if they're on a draw, they're priced in to call, hoping that they hit their lucky card on the turn. Because of this, we don't recommend the continuation bet when facing three or more opponents. Unless, of course, your opponents are new to the game or excessively tight.